Good afternoon. It's great to be among friends and kindred spirits. The 21st century poses many challenges that require new ways of thinking, none more important than the economic role of women in a rapidly changing world. But women today remain blocked from contributing their true potential. This has a huge cost. In some countries, per capita income lags significantly because women are denied equal opportunity. They represent half the world's population but contribute far less than 50% of economic activity. What is needed to change this picture is a concerted effort to open the door to opportunity with what I call the three years of women's empowerment. Learning, labor, and leadership. First, about learning. Education is the foundation upon which any change is built. Learning helps women to help themselves and break the shackles of exclusion. Nowhere is this more essential than in the developing world. There is an African adage that goes, If you educate a boy, you train a man. If you educate a girl, you train a village. If learning is just the first step, labor is the second. Labor facilitates women to flourish and achieve their true potential. But at present, when women participate in the workforce, they too often tend to get stuck in low paying, low status and low security jobs. Globally, women earn only three quarters as much as men, even with the same level of education and in the same occupation. Surely, one of our most basic norms should be equal pay for equal work. Recent researchers show that eliminating gender gaps in economic participation can bring an increase in per capita income. We can undoubtedly promote more opportunity for women in the workplace. It is all about changing laws, for example, by ensuring that property and inheritance laws do not discriminate against women. It also means policies that encourage education and health care. Moreover, we need to provide greater access to credit so that women can achieve greater economic independence. So, learning and labor are key factors. The third L is leadership that enables women to rise and fulfill their innate abilities and talents. Here, there is plenty of room for improvement. The irony is that when women lead, they tend to do as good a job as others, if not a better job. They are more likely to make decisions based on consensus building, inclusion, compassion, and with a focus on long-term sustainability. It is true that women sometimes lack the confidence to match their competence. But they need to change that mindset and reset the narrative in their favor. So, it is essential that women be ready to dare the difference to take risks and step outside their comfort zones. Nonetheless, even those with the drive to succeed continue to face barriers, whether we are talking about providing primary education for girls in a village or executive positions for women in business. It is time to create a world where all women can meet their potential without impediment or prejudice and the world will reap the benefits. The three L's will help us get there. If we dare the difference, the difference will deliver. Thank you very much.